Racist Exposed on Paternity Court Part 2. To pin a child on me that ain't mine. And she's causing problems in my current relationship. Well, how am I causing issues in your current relationship when you just called to me yesterday? So what are you talking about, sir? I'm not trying to keep up with you. I just wanted to know, is this really happening? So you think she's trying to pin a baby on you? Yes, Your Honor. This time around in court, Charmaine Kirby wants to prove that her 11-month-old son, Caden, is Thomas Johnson's biological child. Mr. Johnson, on the other hand, believes the child isn't his, and this entire situation is taking a huge toll on his current relationship. Uh, yes, I told her that she was going to be my baby mom, but it was just talk. It was nothing like that. We only had sex. <laughs> that was it. Nothing more. And plus, she's trying to pin this baby on me because she needs help now. And then I don't she need wanna... your help. My baby's well taken care of. He's well, been taken care of for almost a year now. Well, why are you threatening me with child support? Because I know you ain't going to do nothing. Miss Kirby says that she just wants this paternity mess sorted out because her son has health issues, and she just wants to know where it's coming from since no one on her side of the family has those issues. She also reveals that she and Mr. Johnson had planned for this baby, but now he's denying him altogether. How did you two meet? Well, Your Honor, we was working um, at this job, and then we had a blackout. And during the blackout, we decided to go to the store. So we in my car, driving to the store. Charmaine started talking sexually. Why would um, I talk, talk sexual to you because, when I'm dealing with someone? Wait, what, what was she saying? Mr. Johnson revealed he was abandoned as a child and would never want to abandon a child of his own, but he knows for sure that Caden is not his. According to him, he looks nothing like Caden. As a matter of fact, he recently had a kid of his own, and even he doesn't look anywhere similar to Caden. It was just a sexual relationship. That's it. So, boom, you said. Yeah. And, and you just started having sex. Yes, yeah. How long did the sexual relationship last? Well, it lasted for months. And during the time, she already told me, Your Honor, that she was having sex with another guy. So apparently, Miss Kirby had started telling Mr. Johnson about the things she likes to do in bed with men. Judge Lake tells her that is not the type of conversation anyone would have on the way to the store. Anyway, they eventually exchanged numbers and literally the next day slept together. Because he knew from the jump that I was sexual dealing with someone. I was dealing with someone at the time me and him met. But I told you, him up front. You just said it was a month. It's been a month. But now you was dealing with somebody. But wait, from, from you talking about what you're going to do to a man in bed to the point when you all are actually in the bed together, that's just less than 24 hours. Miss Kirby tries to defend herself by saying it was a month before and after she was with Mr. Johnson. But he shuts it down by saying that Kirby had told him she was single but was sleeping with another man too. This other man had allegedly stayed over at her apartment as well. Faced with these claims, Miss Kirby admits to it all. So why'd you go to her house after that? Because I wanted to, to be clear, am I this father, the, am I the father of this baby? Oh, you were taking it one step further because as you stated in your earlier testimony, you're not gonna play around if you think a child is your child. Yes, Your Honor. And so you went to her house. Mr. Johnson didn't even find out about the pregnancy until he saw Miss Kirby's post on Facebook about it. He messaged her asking if he was the father and she said no. But when Mr. Johnson showed up at her house, Miss Kirby did a complete 180 and said he was the father. You're basing this on the exact date of yes. sex? Yes, Your Honor. Excuse me, Your Honor. Mindful, be mindful that we are talking about two different guys. She was having sex with another guy before this guy that she said that's her, her um, supposed to be baby father. Miss Kirby says she told him he wasn't the father initially because she didn't want to deal with him. But then Judge Lake asks her why she's suing for child support. Miss Kirby says that when she calculated the conception window, it dates back to the day she has slept with Mr. Johnson. I was taking you to Burger King and going to Kroger grocery shopping. <laughs> Woo, Mr. Johnson, you know how to whine and die. <laughs> oh, woman, honey. Uh, what? <laughs> yes, fantastic. <sighs> <laughs> okay. According to Miss Kirby, Mr. Johnson wasn't there during the pregnancy or the birth. Her family was. 
Mr. Johnson cuts in saying that she didn't want him to be there unless it was for sex or food. Miss Kirby fires back that he couldn't even buy her a $5 chicken. Talk to the court about the struggles. Um, my baby has health issues. Um, he has a G-tube, so we back and forth from different doctors, ENT, um, G-tube clinic, all that. And he's also a bino. Oh. When asked if he had ever bonded with Caden or even seen him in person, Mr. Johnson says no. He says that Miss Kirby used to video call him at first, and then she started asking for diapers and stuff, so he told her to call the baby daddy. Miss Kirby cuts in, saying that she asked him to see if he was willing to do anything. It's down to a child. Is it through the mother, father? How does that work? So it's both. Each parent, even though they look phenotypically or to the eyes, normally pigmented, carry an abnormal gene. So one abnormal gene from mom, one abnormal gene from dad come together, make an albino child. Mr. Johnson revealed he didn't know the child had albinism and said that it doesn't run in his family. Miss Kirby also clarified that albinism doesn't exist in her family history, but was unsure about the other two men's family history. Judge Lake then calls in Dr. Samantha Brown Parks to better understand albinism. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> Congratulations are in order again. <laughs> Despite understanding what albinism is, Mr. Johnson still says he's not the father and is also hoping he isn't the father because he already has a child. Ouch. With that said, Judge Lake calls in the paternity results. Much to Mr. Johnson's shock, he is Caden's biological father. When the baby was born, I cut the umbilical cord, the doctors wiped the baby off, and they gave... Miss Beto, the baby, at first. She was still fatigued from delivering birth. Understandably. So they gave me the baby. The doctor that uh, gave the procedure to deliver the baby, he handed me the baby and he looked at me. He said, are you sure this baby's yours? <laughs> and I looked what? at the doctor, I looked- Clifton Bolton is in court today, desperate to find out if seven-month-old Ileana is his biological child because he has paternity doubts. Ileana's mother, Loreline Bido, was offended that he even asked for a DNA test and says these doubts are wrecking her family apart. Well, when the doctor asks you, Look, I... you know, before congratulations, are you sure this is your child? That's doubt. That's they doubt. She mine, I know. She his, I know. But that's what I'm saying. For the father, that can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. It Turns out the baby's skin color was white. Mr. Bolton handed a picture of Ileana to Judge Lake where she visibly looked white. Miss Bido cut in saying that it was ridiculous because both of them are mixed. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the child was white. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So now the doctor... Your family members people and your boss yeah, people are public. all just openly asking you. Yeah, this is baby mine. Even when I go to the grocery store, Your Honor, when I go to the grocery store, they're looking at me, oh, it's a beautiful baby, she's gorgeous. Is she yours? And it's only because she's skin color, the blue eyes, you know, it's like, wow, but. Up until Ileana's birth, Mr. Bolton believed it was his child. But after the delivery and the doctor's words, he started having some doubts. He eventually pushed them to the side because he knew he had a loyal wife. But when family members started asking if she was really his, that's when the doubts resurfaced. The whole time that I was cheating, I got a couple of buddies he I was. hang out with before. I got a couple of buddies I hang out with. They do things on the side. Your Honor, now, I saw the text from being the with females. That, being with them, I'm getting accused daily. So it's like I felt like I was pressured, getting pushed to the point where I should cheat just to make you happy. Because this is what you're doing. You that put was pressure your on your logic? Yes. Another reason why Mr. Bolton wants a DNA test is that on three separate occasions, the women he was with told him he was the father of their child, but it was later proven he wasn't. Judge Lake asks Miss Bido if she had been any other guy during conception, and she says that they had broken up last year because of his infidelity. And I did it the right way. I left you first. I was single. Hey, well, 
Yeah. And during the time you broke up and you left him, did you sleep with someone else yes, without I using protection? I did, I did, I did. And let me tell you. Miss Beto says that he didn't admit to her right away about being unfaithful, so she talked to the other female first, for the story straight, and then confronted him. Mr. Bolton says that she slept with another man after she left, but Miss Beto makes a statement that shuts him up. It in open court mm -hmm. that she slept with someone else one time at least was without protection. Right. And Mr. Bolton, you believe that this man could be the father. Yeah. According to Miss Bido, she met the guy a month later while hanging out, and they ended up sleeping together a total of two times, once unprotected, but it wasn't a relationship. Mr. Bolton says she didn't even attend any of his calls after she cheated, but then again, why would she? I mean, but how often is it that babies can look alike? But, but Your Honor, I just want to show you this evidence right here. Let me see that evidence, sir. But I don't think she looks like the other man's baby. Okay. That's Eliana, and that's me. Eliana's pink, Caucasian, white, and you see me. Really? I'm brown, no blue eyes. I mean, the only thing I see is a nose. Things take a turn for the worse when Mr. Bolton reveals he found messages from the same guy on her phone while they were trying to make their relationship work after his infidelity. But what sent him over the edge was finding pictures of the dude and his daughter on her phone, and the kid looked exactly like Ileana. It's not just about you being faithful. You have to take a person along with their life experience. That's... So, Ooh, no, no, hold on. When you're in a relationship, that's how people come. Everybody has their own baggage, or as my... Mr. Bolton says that after she's kicked him out, he went back to check on his daughter one day, and Miss Bido asked him to put her down if he doesn't think it's his daughter. He added that if she was such a loyal woman, why have an attitude towards him wanting a DNA test knowing his past? I just really want to be a father to, to this child here. I've been there since day one. The baby You're shower. You're worried, still. I, I am, just because, yeah, my past, and you know, just. And the last time you were in like court? like the signs, the last time I was in court, I mean, you know, came out, not yours. But the signs are there, so many people saying it. I need to be sure. Things plot thickens even more when Mr. Bolton says that in the five years they'd been together, she'd never gotten pregnant. But after messing around with the other guy and coming to him, she was immediately pregnant. Now that would raise doubts in anyone's mind. You are her father. Oh, uh, okay, yo, these But what I tell you. Yeah, I'm gonna ask Ms. Bill a question. Yes, you may. But you don't got no questions for me. Everything speaks for itself, because that's what you told me. Oh. Actions. <laughs> With everything said and done, Judge Lake calls in the results that hold the fate of Ileana and this couple's future. Mr. Bolton is over the moon when it's revealed that Ileana is his biological father and wastes no time in proposing to Miss Beto. The court has made efforts to track down Wesley's mother and we will hear from her shortly. Now, the defendant claims you're a deadbeat dad. Have you been helping with the care of Wesley? Uh, I would help with my son if I was allowed in his life or I wasn't told that I can come and see my son whenever I want to, and yet I have to see him outside. I'm not allowed inside the house. This time, severely autistic Wesley Maldonado Neely's fate depends on today's paternity results, which will reveal if Edward Marsh, or his mother's neighbor, is his biological father. Standing against him is Wesley's grandmother, Dawn Maldonado, who wants Mr. Marsh to stop being a deadbeat dad. When you went by and saw him when he was one year old, you said this wasn't right for him to have to come outside for you to see him. Correct. So you made the decision that I'm just going to leave this alone, I'm going to pay my child support, but I'm going to keep my distance, and when he's 18, he can find me. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't see a point of every time I went to go see my son to be threatened to be put in the ER if I walked through the threshold of the door. Since Wesley lived with Miss Maldonado since she was the legal guardian, Mr. Marsh could visit Wesley only if he met him outside the house. Around his first birthday, Mr. Marsh knew he couldn't put the boy through that stressful situation, so he decided to drop all contact and just lay child support. So when you say if he wanted to see his son, you believe he is, in fact, Wesley's father? I, that's what I have to believe, Your Honor, because his name is on my grandson's birth certificate. I did not give birth to him. I can only go by what's on the paperwork. All right, so on the paperwork, he is listed as a father. In your mind, the way you operate, he's the father. And
According to Miss Maldonado, Mr. Marsh wasn't allowed inside the house because he had disrespected her and her husband when Wesley was around three months old. She told him if he wanted to meet his son, he could do so somewhere else outside. But Your Honor, but he like... knows that my daughter's a liar. It's not a secret. It's not That's a secret. That's why I went to his house before my grandson was born and told him, how do you know that that baby is yours? Wow. And then after I that baby was born, I told him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You went to his house before yes, the baby was born. Yes, ma'am. The reason Mr. Marsh doubts paternity is that Wesley doesn't look anything like him. After all, he and his family are full-blown white. But he didn't have doubts back when Wesley's mother, Jolene, was pregnant. Because he loved her and didn't think she'd ever be unfaithful to him. That's why he also signed the birth certificate. Do you believe that Mr. Marsh is Wesley's father? Honestly, I do not believe he is. Really? That's hers. Why is that? Well, because my sister has had multiple friends, boyfriends. There you go. Now Miss Maldonado knew her daughter was a liar and wanted to confirm with Mr. Marsh how he knew he was the father. Her own son, Jolien's brother, even took a stand to say that his sister would rather die than be truthful about anything. Yikes. That same doubt is what brings him here today and probably has affected the way he has interacted over the years, For always sure. in the back of your mind, not knowing, is this or is this not my child? Yeah, he looks like one of the neighbor kids that we went to high school with that she spent an awful lot of time with other than who lived a mile down the road from where I was living at. Spent an awful lot of time over at his house versus at my house. And Mr. Maldonado says that even he warned Mr. Marsh that if he wasn't sure the baby wasn't his, he shouldn't sign the paperwork. With that, Judge Lake tells Miss Maldonado she can stand here accusing Mr. Marsh of being an absent father when both she and her son have filled his head with doubts about paternity. When I saw that baby in the hospital, the first time I looked at it, I went, that's not ours. Wow. We are Anglo-Saxon and Scandinavian, and I've got the darkest hair in our family, and the rest of my kids are white and blonde. My grandchildren are all white and and blonde. Wait. The neighbor couldn't make it to court, but did submit a statement. He started by saying that the three of them were close, but after Jolene got pregnant, they had a falling out and he hasn't talked to either of them since then, and he also believes he's not the father. Judge Lake then calls Mr. Marsh's mother to the podium. Well, DNA out. is, DNA does its own thing. However, I will give you this, ma'am. When the mother's mother and the mother's brother comes over to the would-be father's house and says, you need to have a DNA test? Now that is something you can base a doubt on. I doubted it, I doubted it from the now, beginning. Another reason why she believes Wesley isn't Mr. Marsh's is that her stepson married a Hispanic woman and all their kids are blonde haired with blue eyes. In short, their genes are pretty strong and none of them show up in Wesley. This child on your own, pretty much since he was born. With the help of both of my sons and my husband, yes, ma'am. Um, I was told in order to see him, I had to buy diapers and diaper wipes. You know, oh, that is definitely unless not somebody all took you've them ever off done him, for this baby is you... pay for the circumcision and buy a box of wipes. That is all you have ever done. Oh, I'm sorry. And I had somebody, somebody, and every... and Judge Lake asks Miss Maldonado how she got custody of Wesley, and it turns out that after his mother had left the house for cigarettes and never returned. Miss Maldonado called her and asked her to take care of the child or transfer custody so she could ask the state for help because she couldn't do it alone. Are his father. Does that mean I get my rights to him? And I can go without the threats? After having heard testimonies from both the grandmother and the father, Judge Lake is finally ready to reveal what the paternity results have in store. Even though Miss Maldonado had hoped Mr. Marsh wouldn't be the father, the results revealed that he was indeed Wesley's biological father.